Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to my room, it's Ryan here. Uh, shooting this video kind of a little late today. Uh, here in the south of France, it is uh, a little bit after five, so hopefully, uh, the you know, it, it won't have gone too dark by the time I'm finished with this. Um, so in this video, I will be sort of resuming from like a little bit of uh, thinking that I had been doing following a comment by Rolling Fox who'd been asking me to tackle the question of being a male INFJ and I had uh, dedicated a few minutes at the end of my last Ren Answers Your Questions video to that topic. Um, partly I feel a bit bad because you know <laughs> I had uh, in that video I was addressing uh, the questions of two different uh, viewers and uh, Jay, I took 26 minutes to answer and Running Fox, I took four minutes. And it's true that Jay was asked more questions, but still, you know, I kind of feel a bit bad. So that, that's partly why I want to address this topic at large in this video. But I also came to the realization that uh, it was, it was a, a, a topic worth discussing because it's true that I had never discussed it before and that it's relevant because a lot of people seem to care about it or to be curious about it. And I guess in a way it's also been a relevant topic to my life. So uh, there you go. So let's discuss, uh, <laughs> you know, male INF genus, I guess. Um, uh, I think until now, and I, I started making a video, I think in July or August of last year. Um, so it's been, what, eight months or something like that at this point? Um, something like that. I have made literally over a hundred videos, uh, like pr probably an average of one a day. And I don't think I've made a single video that d would not, like let's say about being INFJ or INFJs, I have not made a single one that would not apply equally to male and female INFJs. So it's interesting because this video that I'm making now or that I will be attempting to make is going to be the first time that I, you know, that I, well, I mean, of course, I, I, I hope that this video will be watched by, by INFJs and non-INFJs of all, of all stripes, but it is, it is, it is going to be about only a certain category of INFJs, uh, assuming that what I'm saying applies to male INFJs. I don't know if it will apply to male INFJs because all I will be able to do is rely on my experience and share my experience. So, so maybe in the, in, in, at the very start, I could tackle partly uh, why it took me a while to come around to this topic. I guess, first of all, because um, it's not... You know, when you when you when you talk about uh, being a male INFJ, when you are a male INFJ, you might think that, like, what's implied in this is that you're going to be discussing your masculinity or whatever, and so you might experience a certain sense of modesty about it. Uh, so that's one reason. Another reason is that I, I'm, for some reason, I I I, I tend to want my 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 discussions to be always as inclusive as possible. So even when I'm talking about INFJ things, I try to make, you know, the discussion about not just INFJs or to apply beyond the INFJs. And there are definitely viewers to Ren's room that are not INFJs. And that's amazing. I think that they are very important to the, the, the enriching of the conversation. Um, now there's an, yet another reason, which is that when you, you know, if I say like I'm a male INFJ, which is the case, I'm sort of, I don't know, like there's, there's, there's at the back, like sort of back behind that sort of categorization, there is this idea that there are, there are male INFJs and female INFJs and call me a social justice warrior or whatever. But, um, I, I do, I do kind of, so, I mean, I do not kind of, I, I fully commits to the view that there are people who are neither male nor female and so I will not want to um, put forward the opinion that I think there are male INFJs who are a certain way and then female INFJs who are that other way 
and that's cis, you know, there are also uh, non-binary INFJs, and so I do not want to exclude them from this conversation. In this particular instance, I will only be talking about my experience as someone who uh, identifies as male and as INFJ. And so, um, there you, maybe we can start because it's been five minutes already. Uh, so, but before, before I embark upon this topic, look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. Look at the way she's all curled up. And you know what I love about, about Hazelnut is like when she sleeps, she has her little paw over her head. I don't know if you can see that, the paw. I just find that so adorable. Anyway, uh, sorry about all this effing. Uh, okay, so, uh, being a male INFJ, is it hard, is it not hard? Um, you know, it seems to me that online what you hear is that male INFJs have a hard time in society because they're seen as either like introverted or effeminate. They don't necessarily um, correspond to some of the idealized standards for, for masculinity um, that they, society makes them believe are the norms that uh, maybe, you know, potential partners expect from them. So um, there's that dimension that I'll have to address. Um, I would say that in my case, there definitely is a sense, and I do, I'm not sure to what extent it's connected to being like a male INFJ, but there is a sense, and I don't know if other male INFJs will be able to relate to it. There is definitely a sense in which the extent to which I am manly, <laughs> if I am, I know that you know my, 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 my girlfriend uh, thinks I'm manly, and I think that she doesn't tell me that uh, because she wants me to be reassured in my in my identity. Um, I think she generally believes that. Uh, I'm not. I've never asked her to to give me like a an analysis in different chapters uh, of what that man, manliness uh, consists of. But I would say that it's uh, maybe it is it is not a kind of manliness that is about having a certain posture, having a certain kind of very kind of built body. You know, I, I don't like go into the gym is not something that I do that much or I don't lift weights. Uh, I'm sure some INFJs do that, but I'm more of a, you know, someone who's in front of a computer and does a lot of thinking and reads a lot of books. And I talk about, you know, when I'm in conversation with people, I, I love, I get excited when I talk about books, when I talk about human relationships, when I talk about uh, emotions, um, when I talk about esoteric stuff, um, you know, that kind of thing. So it's true that I can adapt because as an INFJ, I feel like I can adapt to an extent. So if I'm with like a lot of, say, because that happens often with, uh, with men, uh, if I'm in a group, especially in the south of France, but it could also be in other places, if I'm with a group of friends or say I've been invited by a friend to a party and I'm talking to a bunch of men that I don't know too well and maybe, well, none of them would be INFJ necessarily, but let's say they're talking about sports or about cars or, you know, because that does happen. And I do get the impression that it's more common when it happens, when, when it's men. Like I will, I will still like find some way to appear like I'm engaged in the conversation. Like if it starts to, to elongate and to, you know, to draw it, uh, I'll find a means of escaping, say I have to go to the bathroom or something, but um, I, I'll use Effie to try to feel like I'm part of the conversation. And sometimes I may even go so far as to pretend that I'm more interested, a little bit of pretending, that I'm more interested in what's being discussed than I really am. So there is a bit of a chameleon thing here, which could also be assimilated to an imposter syndrome thing, because I feel like I have to adapt a lot of the time to discussions that men have. Um, and it's true that I, f I, I sometimes feel like, especially if I rely on my experience, yeah, in South France, but also in, in, in Ireland to some extent, it's almost like the discrepancy and the level of chameleonism that I have to, to muster to adapt to conversation. It happens almost more often with men than with women. And I've always had a very great number of female friends. Like I've, I've, I've always had pretty much half and half in terms of, 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 of like a female male friends. 
Uh, and for, for my friends, among my friends, I would say that that's higher than average. I would say like I have friends who have not many female friends and I have other ones that, uh, and you're going to think this is very retrograde, this is very backward in a way, and it is, who, who find it almost like strange that I have so many female friends or whatever. Uh, so I have, I have a real piracy of, of, of male female friends. And I, I do have to adapt more uh, when I'm talking to, to men, I suppose. But generally, my manliness, whatever it is, does not have to do with being into these things. So like, it's, it's as my girlfriend describes it, I think, um, but uh, that's only my interpretation. It's just that, like, I'm sure of myself with regards to what I'm interested in. I don't feel like I need to justify myself to other people for liking what I like. And I don't uh, feel like I have to justify myself for not fitting the standard of manliness. And if people think that's effeminate to just be principally interested in books and in theory and in um, and, and for being kind of soft in my delivery and being in, you know, when I'm with people, the way I speak, speaking all with my hands, my mannerisms, that's they couldn't think that I, I, I could not care. I could not care. But I, there's a way in which I you know, I will always express, yeah, there's also something else, which is that I will always express what I think at the end of the day, like, even if sometimes I try to couch it in terms that are diplomatic, I, I'm someone who's, I think, has a lot of integrity and is very honest and is truthful. And I do adapt a little bit, like I said to you earlier on, but if I'm faced with a, a question or, and the possibility of telling an untruth to fit in, I will select the truth systematically and so and I don't like when people like I don't like when people disrespect what I'm saying or distort what I'm saying and I usually challenge them now the challenge is and and the kind of virility that is involved here is is almost like more of an intellectual nature like it's 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 a verbal and it's intellectual like I've never come to fisticuffs with someone to prove that I'm manly on that level so, but I express that in that way, but it comes a lot from a place of confidence and acceptance about who I am, about not wishing I were anything else, about being actually kind of, like if, if I'm gonna talk about being an INFJ, like from a place of also just really embracing my identity, being INFJ, really, really communicating, not necessarily verbally, but in the way I am and what I talk about, uh, the fact that I'm, I feel blessed to be an INFJ, an INFJ man, not because it's rare, not because it's this, not because of that, because I find that like the the predispositions and you know the the the, the superclivities and gifts that an INFJ person has are very precious, and they can make make uh, the world a happier place. They can generally make the world a happier place, um, and from the moment that I've accepted that, you know, it's and I've embraced that it's easier for me, I think, to face up to other people who might be trying to criticize me or challenge me to whatever, you know, like a, a critique is, is, is okay. A constructive critique, a constructive dialogue based on that critique is fine. But if, if there are people who start messing with me or whatever, you know, because I'm very confident of where I'm coming from, I will, I will, I will face them, no problem. And, and, and that's, you know, that's regardless of whether I'm a male energy or not, but as it happens, it comes from a place of having accepted that. And it's something that it's something that I wonder sometimes about other male INFJs. Maybe, you know, they could, there will be male INFJs who will contribute to this. But um, I remember the last interview I did with INFJ Huey, who has a great channel, and I, and I recommend you check it out. We had this Skype interview, and in the comments, and I've said this before, in the comments to the interview, in the comments to the live chat, the, well, or in the live chat, there are people who are saying, and I'm not sure they were men, some of them were men, and they were saying like being an INFJ is not something that I would wish on anyone. And I think what was implied was, you know, um, being so sensitive, being so paradoxical in so many different ways, being a bit tortured because of the tug of war between FETI and ITI, social, social introverted, abstract, but wanting acceptance, these different things. I just draw an immense source of inspiration and strength from all these different things. And I try to transcend them every day. Uh, you know, Effie has a power of, of, of uh, relating to others, having your voice listened to by others, considered to be worthy of being listened to. 
uh, ani for the vision, ti for the articulation of the systematicity of the vision, all these different things. I just, I, I really would not want to be anything else. And I just think that this embrace of my identity just help, just help to to make my, my male identity as an INFJ is something that's relatively comfortable. It's just that I don't embrace it as something that ought to be embraced in comparison with a standard that society sometimes imposes on us that I do not really feel to be a real standard in the first place. And by not considering that it's a real standard in the first place, I show a kind of indifference or a kind of challenge towards, that in, towards it that in turn seems to be perceived as manly or whatever or, or confidence by people anyway so in a way it's almost like it's a bit of a man, a bit of a win-win situation um, but I'm aware at the very same time that uh, it's it's not something that is easily achieved necessarily and it comes from having a bit of experience being a slightly well being slightly older than when I was when I was a teen because when I was a teen I was really shy I was I was terrified of the idea of talking to women and I was uh, tortured. I was always kind of like uh, willing to defend my own turf. It, it's something that's always been in me for some reason. Uh, but I've, I've been able to channel it better now. But with getting older, I suppose, you know, it's just... Uh, it's just been about learning more about myself, taking some time to get to know myself better and in getting to know myself better to understand what about the INFJ male and identity and beyond that is of value, is worthy of being treasured, is worthy of being given to the world. And to not feel shame about that. It take, it's, 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 a, it's a tough journey and it's not always easy, but I do think it's achievable. And uh, I do practice it as much as I can every day. All right, I hope that was useful. I have you know in the comments what you thought. See you soon, guys. Take care.